All right. So we have another transform interview. We're here with with Angela. Welcome to the Modern People Leader in our little scrappy startup studio that we have in the middle of the hallway. I love it. Everybody started scrappy. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've been starting with the same question for all of these interviews so far. And the question is, what's giving you energy right now? Everything about the space is giving me energy, right? It's uncharted. Nobody has a playbook. I mean, if you think about chat, GBT was what, launched two months ago. And already the thing is blazing more brilliant than it was when it first launched. And the implications for people and for organizations is just a complete blue ocean, right? We don't know what's going to happen. How could you not be energized by that? It's so true. And in chat GPT specifically has come up so much in these interviews that we're having, in side chats, in the the speaker. Literally 20 minutes ago, we were asking about it. <laughs> and so... I, I totally get that. And for me, what's given me energy is having like actual physical social connection and um, the feeling of these relationships that we've built with people virtually through these interviews and seeing people live. It's just been the most amazing experience because it's like we're long lost friends and yet we've never met each other in the flesh. And so and here we are. Here we are. Right. And the convergence of technology and people. Um, it, we will still need each other, right? Yeah. And we will just have to find different forms. And I think organizations, right, that are still struggling with hybrid or remote, there will still be people in the equation. And so all of that is just, yeah, that gives me energy, figuring all that stuff out. Yeah. So you're going to be speaking today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. And, and what's the topic? Pay transparency and Pay the transparency. impact on the talent pipeline. Okay. So for the people that that couldn't make it out to transform this year, What's like the one takeaway, like if they were here that you'd want them to leave your session with? It's better for your organization to be transparency. I mean, that's full stop, right? It's not what's whether it's about pay, it's about where you are in your journey for DEI, it's about your financial performance, it's about anything about your mission, your vision, your values. You got to communicate that. And people can self select out and determine whether or not they want to be part of your ecosystem. But you got to make that clear because otherwise you're going to have people who don't want to drink Kool-Aid and who are actively undermining what it is you're trying to achieve. So transparency on all dimensions is important. This is a topic. So when when we saw, and it's kind of been a real-time situation. So we shared our Calendly with speakers. People have been signing up for interviews. And, and so when I saw the first list of who had signed up, I you were at the top of my list in terms of conversations because of the of your speaker topic on pay transparency and this has come up so many times in our our modern people leader conversations and so for the executive that is like no hell no we could never do that i don't care what these you know what people are saying that's just there's no way what do you have to say to that that oh. executive out there and i think there's i unfortunately i think that's there's more of those than less on the topic of pay transparency. I could be wrong though. So what what do you have to say? The statistics bear themselves out. Applicants are more likely to apply for a company that is pay transparent because they believe it telegraphs something about how they're going to treat their employees once they get in the door. Not only that, but the candidate quality increases because people are like, they, they're attracted to companies that practice transparency and trust. And then you get better candidates because they're already a good match. They understand the expectations of the role and what they're going to make. So it is win, win, win all across. So companies that are laggards to that are not going to win the war for talent. We we had on Ciara Lakani and Murari from CVC Partners, and it was a group episode that we did a couple of weeks ago. And we were talking about not just the future of work, but like what does the, the future world that we live in look like? And I think the point that both of them made was the world that we want to live in, we haven't lived in yet. And when, when we were talking about this and we gave them that question, I think one of their response, I can't remember which one of them said this, but they said the future is far more transparent. Absolutely. Absolutely. With everything. And yeah. what I've been seeing too is increasingly employees want hyper-personalization in their employee experience. So they don't care about your internal mobility statistics. They want to buy, they want to know about their journey. They don't care that that person is making market pay. They want to know about their pay. So everything is about my journey and what are you doing for me? Cookie oh. cutter approaches won't cut it. Oh my God, Angela, where have you been? We 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 should have interviewed you like months ago. We these are all things we've been talking about. And so 
uh, I'm just curious, are these policies and practices that you guys are have adopted at Harvard Business Publishing? Yeah, so we're actually going to go live with our pay transparency on April 1st. We're a little bit of a laggard, in fact, but I wanted to make sure that we got the change management right. Of course. We're not living in a state where it's yet mandated, mandated so we're okay. But, but in other areas, we are definitely opening the black box of HR practices, right? We want to talk about how you get promoted, how you advance the sense of inclusivity, how you get people to have a better work-life balance. I'm blowing the lid off of that. Right. And so as a people leader, there's no shortage of crises or hot topics or buzz, or there are a lot of things that we could be focused on and you have chosen to focus on this. And so I'm just curious, why is this topic so near and dear to you? Um, Because it's only going to gather momentum, right? There's a, right now, I think only a dozen states that have something on the books around pay transparency. And so if you're in a state that's not, be prepared, right? Because it's it's coming. In Massachusetts, where I am, there's already something in front of our state government, and it's probably going to be more ambitious than anything that's already out there. It's probably not only going to just require posting of pay ranges, but regular reporting so that it's public and it's a matter of record. And that's that's all, that's pretty aggressive. And what does that reporting look like? So yet yet to be determined, but it's probably going to cut along. Tell us about your gender equity. Tell us about your ethnic equity. I mean, it's going to be, yeah, completely expose yourself and your pay practices. And where where does that data live? Is that going to live on the company's website or where where are they expected to share this information? It's a great point. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be something like a tax return where, you yeah. know, you report it out and then they publish it on their website and then you can go in and say, tell me HVP's pay equity statistics. Interesting. Yeah. To come. That's always the question I have. Like, where's this data going to live? Where, where am I going to be able to find it? Right. But I guess nobody, that it's not figured out yet. Right. It's a work in right. progress. Devil's in the details. Yeah. So I know you haven't had a chance to attend as many sessions as you would have liked. <laughs> um, is there anything that you were, you know, hoping to attend? Was there a session or two that caught your eye? Definitely want to understand more the implications of AI. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was in a session on Monday where someone from Electronic Arts was talking about how it used to take them three months to model out a simulation in a video game. Guess how long it takes them now? Uh, sorry, three weeks. It used to take three weeks. Three minutes. What? Not three days, not three hours, three minutes. Jeez. So think about the implications of that on the people in that space for that organization. It's mind blowing. I mean, the world is evolving in a blink of an eye. So when you think about people, so machine translation is another area that we haven't been able to combat. AI now has applications for that. Wow. Right. So now it's going to become fluent in Mandarin Chinese, right? Wow. It's going to become fluent in Tagalog, right? I mean, all I, name it. And it's just, I, I can't even, I can't even utter the words because I'm just so gobsmacked by how quickly the technology is moving. And so we, we haven't been able to attend a lot of sessions, Daniel and I, because we've been doing this. One of the sessions we attended was uh, a VC kind of roundtable, and they Allison Baum Gates mm -hmm. was facilitating the conversation, and she did this really cool thing that I'm gonna adopt. So, shout out to Allison. This was yours. Um, Bad um, future. Yes. So, what you know, and and we don't have to go through everything they did, but of all of the the major changes that have happened since, since covid let's we'll define it as 2020 to now <laughs> of all the changes and the i guess innovative things that have happened what do you think is here to stay for sure well i was going to say remote work but there are definitely entire industries where that's just not going to happen right. right hospitality healthcare. I like, I don't, I just, I think telemedicine can only get you so far. Right. And people are still going to want a high touch experience when they go on vacation, right. They don't want to be serviced by someone on a screen, right. To find dining, right. That's going to still be served and prepared right. with love by somebody. Right. But I think for office workers, for knowledge workers, I think those organizations who haven't figured out how to bring people back, I think they're, they're talking about the wrong thing. What they should be talking about is where can my people be most productive and how can they feel like they're part of a community? Mm. That's the problem we should be solving, not where are they sitting. Right. That's right. Where and so, so on the flip side, what do you think of all the things that have happened since 2020? What do you think, unfortunately, is just a fad that um... companies that think that they can go back to pre COVID? <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of, of one of the conversations we had with Dina Upton from Drift early, early on in COVID. This must have been like one of our first 10, 15 episodes. And I think 
I think she she called it. She said, we're going through a one way door right now and we're never going to be able to go back. I agree. And the companies that don't figure this out now are going to be left behind forever. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Right. I mean, back to the hyper personalization, employees know what they want and there are lots of options out there. I mean, despite all the layoffs, really good talent will have choices. And if you want to be competitive, you got to meet them where they are. And so as you look to the future, what one trade or skill do you think a modern people leader should have Empathy. or must have? Empathy. Right. So understanding what that employee's needs are, whether that's coaching, whether that's learning and development, whether it's they just need some time off because they're burnt out, whether it's they need a little bit more handholding, whether it's you need to back off because they know what they're doing, being able to key in on what the individual needs and then providing it. We actually heard something interesting in one of our random chats that we had earlier today. It was uh, with the founder. It was Natalie, the founder of uh, Translator, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Translator. <laughs> exactly. I think you asked her that question and she said empathy, but then she she revised it to self-awareness because she said you're not capable of having empathy unless you have self-awareness. And and I feel like we're hearing either self-awareness or empathy being the response that we get to that question. And so I'm going to ask a follow up question to that because uh, I have a I, ha I have a lot of hypotheses, one of which is that we've got a management crisis in this country, maybe the world, in which we have the responsibility of a manager has increased over the last few years. The things that are on the manager's plate, yes. the things that the manager has to own and drive. And we've all heard the same people that don't leave companies, they leave managers. And I believe that we have not equipped managers to be uh, self-aware, to be empathetic, and some may naturally have those, may be strong, but they've never had to apply those traits in the ways that they have to now. How do you think we're going to get around this problem? That's so interesting. So I met someone at this Transform conference who is building out a solution for that. So, so middle managers are absolutely getting crunched, right? So they're player coach and they have to be, they have to practice contemporary leadership, which is definitely about empathy and compassion. And and we've got this world that's kind of crazy all around us. So our imperative is to create at least at work an oasis where people can show up, feel valued, contribute, feel respected, right? And so how do we give them those skills? And I think for us, the challenge is time. How do you find time to help them develop those skills? You don't, you don't have natural role models because you're not walking around in a physical environment where you can see people doing that really, really well. But that is absolutely a challenge is how do you deliver those experiences in the model where we're working today? I don't know that there's an easy answer, but organizations that don't prioritize that will fall behind as well. What's uh, what's the name of the company? It, well, actually, it ha doesn't have a name yet. Okay. But Yash, Y A S H Yash. is okay. that's his first name. All right, I'm gonna have to find Yash. We're gonna have yeah, to track him down. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure awesome. I can look it up. Okay, okay. I'm sure I can look find it up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, and I'm sure he would love to talk to you about it. Yeah. Should we do one more closes? Yes. Yeah. So we, one of our traditions in the Modern People Leader is we do a one word or phrase close to end every episode. Okay. And it could be anything that comes to mind. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'll go. Yeah. I'm going to say fun. I, you just brought this really fun energy to this conversation. We were chatting and ripping before we even <laughs> hit record. And so that's my one word close is fun. I'm going to let you go next. Well, well, I, well I'm stalling. Gratitude. Gratitude. So thank you for reaching out. And looking to make Thank a connection. Thank you for responding. Right. I mean, that's what this conference is really about, is right bringing back people to a place where they can share ideas, debate one another, and mm -hmm. just enjoy, yeah, enjoy being together. So I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm going to say joy. I, I've just, I don't know. Every conversation that I've had, whether it was a random person that I networked with yesterday at the pool party or somebody that I run into on in the EXP I feel like I just get joy from every conversation that I'm having. So, and that's how I feel right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>